Very good dogs. All right, guys, welcome back to the bluegrass on this beautiful September afternoon. Today, we are going to uh, talk about a question that I just don't feel uh, gets asked often enough in dog training, which is why does your dog pull on the leash? Okay, there's tons of videos now on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube of people peddling information that's going to get your dog to walk perfectly on a leash in five minutes a day or in five easy steps or if you use this particular kind of collar or whatever. And uh, for the most part, like I think that uh, a lot of it's nonsense and most of those people are missing the bigger issue, which is why is your dog pulling on a leash in the first place? Okay, that's what we need to address. You have to always remember that uh, you can do things fast, right? Or you can do things right. Now, the great thing about doing things right is that if you do things right, uh, it kind of eventually uh, it gets fast. But if you do things fast, it almost never gets right. So with your dog training, whenever you're consuming dog training content on the internet, just remember that anybody that's offering quick and easy and fast and effective, right, they're probably not really going to give you something that works, okay? Fast dog training is exactly like fast weight loss, right? It might give you some temporary reprieve, right? You might feel like you've made some temporary results, but they're not long lasting because you don't uh, address the underlying issues in play. So we're going to head up to my small challenges course now, and uh, we're going to walk some dogs, and we're going to talk about why dogs pull on the leash, okay? But before we go up there, I'd like for you to pause the video right now and write in the comments below why does your dog pull on the leash, okay? And be honest with yourself, you know? Tell me why you believe, from your dog's perspective, pulling on the leash is uh, what it should be doing when you take it out for a walk. Okay, cameraman, we gave him a chance to comment. So let's get up here to the small challenges course. Now, what I've done, guys, is I've come out in my field and I made sure to get a little bit of a pre-fatiguing session in right with these dogs because there's an inverse relationship between uh, exercise and anxiety or exercise and misbehavior or exercise and boundary testing right so before I start in with my my uh, formal training sessions I always like to have like just a little bit of a pre uh, schoolwork recess so I come out here and I let them run around and then I like to kind of run with them come on dogs so I'm gonna run up here and uh, kind of get them a little worked up and then uh, by the time we get to the small challenges course, you know, it's like me being a, you know, old fashioned third grade uh, uh, school teacher, take the kids out to recess, get them fired up, play a little kickball, and then we come in and do our math work. Come on dogs, let's go. Come on, good dogs, very nice. Okay guys, come on, up, up, up. All right, so now let's get back to talking about this question that people do not like to ask. People do not like to ask the question, why does my dog pull on the leash? In all honesty, because people do not like the answer. The truth is that most dogs pull on the leash, okay, because they lead lives of quiet desperation. Okay? And you might say, well, Stoney, what do you mean by that, the lives of quiet desperation? <sighs> let's just turn the tables a bit, and let's put you in the dog's position. If I offered you this deal, I said, you could come live at my house. Now, you don't get free run of my house, right? I mean, a substantial portion of the day, I lock you up in a little plastic box. But then when I get home from work, I tie a rope around your neck and uh, I take you outside. Now, when I take you outside, I immediately want you to eliminate in a spot that I've chosen so that it makes it convenient for me to, to clean up, right? Okay, then we're gonna continue on our walk, but on the walk, like, I don't want you to try go see any of your friends, right? I don't want you to try to smell anything. I don't want you to like, uh, like uh, interact with the environment in any way. I don't want you to be petted, uh, you know, or, or loved on by any, any of the other people that we run into. I just want you to walk on this leash. Hey, and besides just walking on the leash or walking on the rope I have on your neck, I want you to look up at my face and act like I'm super important because I need that, okay? Now, when we're done with our little walk, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you home and I'm going to put you back in your little plastic box. Then I'm going to go out and eat chicken wings and watch football with my friends. And then maybe I'll come home and after I've been out uh, watching football, I'll put, you, put a rope back on your neck. I'll take you back out and uh, I'll tell you to eliminate again, right? And then we go back in and go to sleep. Would you take that deal? Of course you wouldn't take that deal. 
You see what I'm saying? That's not a very good deal for most dogs. And so when you're like on the internet and you're looking for solutions to dogs pulling on the leash, guys, the solutions aren't usually very good if you don't know the root cause. And the root cause for most pulling in a dog's life is quiet desperation. They just don't get to do enough fun stuff. It really is that simple, right? Now, look at Otter here. Otter, uh, he lives in uh, Lexington, Virginia, and he pulls on the leash a lot where he lives, okay? Because, like, he just doesn't get to be as friendly as he would like to be. And so when he's presented with options, come on. When he's presented with options to see people out in public or to see other dogs or to see squirrels or see things like that, Look, guys, these two dogs, they're bred to be super happy and super outgoing and to crave attention. When you buy a dog to crave attention, yes, it does crave attention from you. It, cra it craves approval from you. But that same dog, it's got a giant capacity for love. And it wants love from lots of people and lots of other dogs. And it wants to get out and enjoy the environment. It wants to roll in the mud sometimes. It wants to roll in stinky stuff sometimes. Okay, it wants to do all the stuff that dogs want to do. Just like when you were a kid, when you had a brand new body, you wanted to go out and you wanted to experiment with that new body. You wanted to be social. You wanted to make new friends. You wanted to test boundaries. Okay, and so that's what you did when you were a kid. You tested boundaries a little bit. Come on, Stonewall. Well, these dogs are exactly the same. So, like, you might say, well, Stoney, if these dogs, if they're wanting to go out and they're wanting to see their friends and they're wanting to test boundaries and they're wanting to, like, interact with nature, why aren't they pulling on the leash? Okay? These dogs aren't pulling on the leash because I've convinced them that leash compliance leads to freedom. Okay? And that brings us to, back to what I was saying earlier about there are no good short-term solutions, okay, to dogs that don't walk on the leash well, okay? I'm a big proponent of food work. I mean, I was an early adopter of food work. I've been doing food work and market training uh, for 30 years, okay? And I love it, okay? But you notice, I don't walk around with handfuls of food or a ball under my arm or a tug in my pocket. And I also don't walk around expecting dogs to stare up at my face. When I go out to walk with dogs, you'll hear me say, let's go because that's what I'm doing. I'm going on a walk. And I say to the dog, hey, let's go on a walk. And on this walk, I would like for it to be uh, a fun and beneficial experience for both of us, right? And if I do my job right, come on, Stonewall. Come on, nerd. If I do my job right, then what happens is the dog starts to realize that, like, we're going to go out and we're going to do something fun that's fun for both of us. And as a result of the dog engaging in the activity with me in a mutually beneficial way, we're both going to end up better off, okay? So this leash compliance right here, even though the dog's a little hot and a little tired from running around and playing, this leash compliance, it leads to freedom, okay? So whether you're on a food work protocol or you're doing traditional uh, leash and collar work, whatever training aid that you're using, guys, always remember that there is a time and place for extrinsic motivation. There's a time and place for your marker training, okay? There's a time and place for your leash and collar training. There's a time and trace to, place to maybe employ balls in the beginning stages of your training, okay? But that's not, that's not a viable long-term strategy. That's why when you see it on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube, it's all chop, chopped up into these little 15 and 20 second things. There's a million, literally, at least one million videos of people getting dogs to walk beside them and look up and prance and the person's got treats and they're holding treats and they're making them spin and they got a ball and they got a tug. Guys, that's not practical. Okay? If you want to work on that, that's fine. That doesn't have anything to do with satisfying your dog's innate desire to get out and interact with the world. Okay? Until you start taking into consideration the dog's perspective, okay, you are going to end up with the dog that pulls on the leash. Right? I don't know what else to tell you. And you might have a short-term management strategy, right? We've got a kind of a return of the yanking crankers where, like, they just tell you if your dog's not paying attention to correct them with the leash and collar or to correct them with the electric collar. I mean, that's like stuff that we were doing when I was a kid, you know? And then you've got the other people that are doing food work, concentrated food work with dogs. It'd be two, three, four years old, and the dog's still on a calorie allocation program where the dog has to look up at the owner and pretend that the owner's super important, pretend that the owner has a magic relationship with the dogs, okay, to, to give you a 20 second, 30 second clip of the dog, you know, staring at the owner and walking right beside them at their, that's not what you're gonna get in real life, 
you know. I call it training dysmorphia. Like when I was a kid, you know, like they started talking about how like, like certain magazines would put unrealistic uh, physical types up for men and women. Like dudes were too buff or the women were too, uh, you know, whatever you would call that, too, too, too good looking. And for regular people, it, it, it made you feel bad about your own body. Guys, that's what's happening with all this crazy leash and collar advice. You know, people take a leash and they put it on a dog and they walk 20 yards and the dog's looking at them. And then you think you're going to go take a hike and your dog's going to walk and look at you like that. No, it's not realistic. Or you think you're going to get your food out and your clicker and you're going to give them some click and treats and they're going to like pay attention to you when they're squirrels and girls and kids on bikes. No. Or you're going to put an electric collar, this is the one I hate the most, is people just throwing those electric collars on the dog and zapping them whenever the dog's not in compliance with their imaginary set of expectations. Okay? None of that's realistic. What's realistic is to get out and spend time with your dog and make your dog understand the relationship between being calm, attentive, and polite on the leash and gaining access to the environment. In other words, gaining access to freedom. You know, a popular saying, uh, I, I first heard it when I was at Bible camp, you know, is that discipline equals freedom. And now there's some YouTube personalities that say that and people att attribute it to the, the YouTube personalities. But in reality, that saying has been around for a long time. And like, it's true, guys. But it's not just discipline on the dog's part. It's discipline on your part. And part of that discipline, part of that self-discipline starts with honest and objective evaluation, okay, of the dog's situation in your life, okay? If your life is, people talk, love to talk about relationships and trust. Look, if there's an electric collar on your dog, don't talk to me about relationships and trust. If you have to manipulate your dog constantly with food, don't talk to me about a relationship and trust, okay? Here's where you know you've got a good relationship, right? Is if your dog looks at you and says, hey boss, what are we doing today? And you say, we're gonna take a walk. And the dog says, that's awesome because I love walking with you. And I know that if I'm calm, attentive, and polite, and I treat you with respect, you're gonna treat me with respect and you're gonna make sure the walk is enjoyable for me also, okay? So that's my little, my little pitch on, uh, you know, uh, on this issue, guys. And so I want you to stop like looking for videos on how to immediately like stop your dog from pulling on the leash. And I want you to start thinking about why your dog is pulling on a leash because that is the long-term solution. All right, I'll see you guys next week.